Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. My name is Aaron and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this medieval commander wolf sword. It was inspired by artwork from Jake Bartok. Here's a look at the original artwork. If you like it, go support Jake on Patreon. He does a lot of cool Star Wars medieval mashups and I've been modeling a lot of his awesome work lately, including this sword. Now if you want to follow along with the build, the 3D print files I offer exclusively to my Patreon members. You get it immediately when you join but I also sell physical kits of this sword in my shop. With all that said, let's go ahead and get started with the build. So I wanna start with the sword blades because I get to use a very interesting new printer I got, the CR30. Now the CR30 is what's called an infinite axis printer, meaning that it's kind of working like a treadmill and it has a practically unlimited build volume in one axis, meaning I can print something as long as I want it to, which is gonna be very handy for long sword blades. Now you could cut them up in a program like Mesh Mixer to fit on a normal print bed, but you'd probably have to cut the blade into four or five pieces and then work on smoothing out those pieces. It's a lot more work and it probably won't be as strong as printing them in a solid piece. Now I'm printing the blade in two halves and I'm just gonna combine them together. The unfortunate thing about this printer is that it's pretty slow it takes around 24 hours to print one half of the blade but once I lift it off the print bed it should be a lot more stable and stronger than trying to connect four or five blade pieces all of the physical kits that I sell in the shop have the blades printed like this and I can't wait to print a lot more Star Wars medieval swords or just long pieces in general this is a very cool printer, but also a very niche printer. Definitely wouldn't recommend it for a first timer, but if you find yourself needing to print long things pretty often, this might be a good printer for it. So once I have the two blade halves and the two wolf head halves, I'm gonna sand down the sides with some low 60 grit sandpaper and use some cyanoacrylate super glue to join them together using clamps to make sure that they stay closed and don't move at all. Now the blades on these wolf heads are going to have to fit together, so we wanna make sure and keep those intersecting areas as clean as possible so that the fit doesn't split the wolf heads apart. I'm also going to be using a 5 16 diameter metal rod that will go down the entire center of this sword. It is going to greatly reinforce the overall strength of the sword and make sure that even though the sword is 3D printed can withstand some wear and tear. So after the glue has dried on the blades, I'm going to insert that metal rod into the blades. If we inserted the rod later, we run the risk of splitting the blades in half because it's a pretty tight fit in there. So we wanna do it as early on as we can. Okay, before we move on, let's talk about this leather wrapped handle. Now in the 3D print files, in the prints, I offer the hilt as plain like this one, but also with the leather wrapping already modeled in. I wanted to try some leather wrapping, so I'm gonna be using the plain version. Now to reinforce the handle, I used some fiberglass resin and just brushed it on there. I'm not worried about smoothing or sanding it out because the leather is going to cover it all, but the leather braiding is going to apply a lot of pressure to the print. I had one snap in half on me when I was doing it the first time, but this fiberglass resin helps reinforce the print, prevents it from breaking while we're braiding. Now, I got to learn a new technique from a YouTube channel called Branton's General Store. I'll link that in the description, but he goes into detail about how to do a knot called a Turk's Head, which I thought was perfect for this handle. I ordered the large golden lacing needle that you see me using. You are 100% gonna need that if you wanna do this. I also ordered the FID that he mentions in the video. I didn't use it that often. It's kind of used to adjust the leather wrapping as you are going. Didn't find it that useful, but if you plan on doing a lot more leather working like I am, it might be a useful tool to grab. I also ordered the black leather lace from Branson's General Store Shop on Etsy. I'll link that in the description as well. But essentially you're creating a crisscross pattern on the hilt. It took me a few tries to get it, but you go up the hilt just making a spiral, back down the hilt making the spiral, trying to get your intersections perfectly lined up on one side of the blade and then you work your way back up and finally back down again. Using that lacing needle to thread the remaining ribbon over and under your previously placed ribbon. Now in the video he mentions a tip that I found very useful. It's that if you're crossing it and it's on top, you go over, and if it's on bottom, then you go under. The going under part is what you're gonna need that lacing needle for. You just kind of fit it under as tightly as you can, pull the remaining ribbon through, and then continue on. Once I got the hang of it, it was an incredibly fun process. And I think for a first time wrap, it came out great. It feels great to hold in your hands. And honestly, having one part that you don't need to sand at all is a great feeling. So I highly recommend doing this method if you can. Okay, now we're gonna go back to the main sword assembly and start working on smoothing those things out. This should be more familiar territory if you watch the channel a lot, but I'm gonna be using a 
two-part fiberglass resin, mixing those two parts together, which will cause a chemical reaction that will harden the resin over approximately an hour. But I'm going to brush it onto all of the remaining 3D printed parts, as well as the sword blade. However, I am not going to be applying it to the bottom of the sword blade, the part that interlocks with the wolf's head, because like I mentioned earlier, we want those places to be as true to the model as possible because they have to interlock together. We don't want to fill that space up with a lot of resin and inadvertently crack the wolf's head when we're putting it all together. Now you want to make sure and wear a respirator and do this in a well-ventilated place because this fiberglass resin smells terrible. You're going to want to put on gloves because it's also very messy and you're going to want to let it cure in a place that's either outside or far away because it smells terrible for about 24 hours. But once this resin is cured, we can start sanding these pieces smooth and to prepare them all for painting. Now for the first pass of sanding, I'm going to be using my trusty mouse sander as well as my detail file sander. This is going to throw up a lot of resin dust, so make sure and do this outside with a respirator on. You're going to need a low grit sandpaper on the mouse and the detail sander because this resin is pretty tough stuff. I definitely wouldn't recommend starting sanding it by hand. This is going to take a lot of the hand sanding out of the process. Next, I'm gonna be using a Duplicolor filler to fill in a lot of those micro scratches that the mouse and the detail sander left and give us a good base for our next filler, Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. I'm only gonna apply one coat of this for now because we still have a lot more filling and sanding ahead of us and doing more than one coat right now isn't gonna help much. So now the pieces are a fair bit smoother than when we started, but there's still a lot of little areas that we need to fill in. And for that, I'm using the Bondo Glazing and the Spot Putty. I only needed about a tube for the entire sword, but I'm gonna be applying it with a gloved finger anywhere I can see defects. Now this Bondo comes pre-mixed and is very easy to sand compared to the resin. It makes for a great filler and we want our entire surface to be as smooth as possible so that the paint binds to the surface very well and looks like metal. Depending on the amount of Bondo that you're using, you need to wait approximately between an hour and a couple hours for it to harden, and then we'll move on to hand sanding. For the hand sanding, I'm starting with a 120 grit pad of sandpaper, using my shop vac to suck up all the Bondo dust before it gets everywhere. The 120 grit sandpaper works great for generally smoothing out and breaking down the top layers of Bondo. After this, I'm going to switch to a 220 grit pad of sandpaper to work on smoothing it out. And you're going to want to increase the grit of sandpaper as you move along. That's going to provide a smoother surface for us. Eventually though, we are going to switch from dry sanding to wet sanding. Now wet sanding is going to give us a great smooth surface. Dry sanding can get us to approximately the texture of paper, but wet sanding can get us to the texture of glass. So it can just work wonders. I'm going to start with a 400 grit pad of sandpaper and work my way up to 800 under this running water. It is that simple, but it's going to provide some great results for us. Now that we have everything wet sanded and smooth, we are ready to start painting. And I tried a few different paint colors on this, but eventually I settled on a Krylon metallic finish. It's got a lot of little metal flakes in the paint. So when you move it around, it reflects light, kind of like glitter. And I don't know, I liked how it looked. So I'm applying a base coat of this metallic dark finish. Then I'm going to accent it with a metallic silver of the same Krylon metallic finish. After the base coat dried, I taped off the area that I wanted to remain this dark metal and then apply the silver accent colors. Now this paint is a little bit unique since it's got all those little metal flakes in it. It likes to run a lot and it will glisten and shimmer as you are painting it on. So it's best to do this painting in light coats, making sure that you don't have any runs. But overall, I love the effect it gives. Now for the blade, I also tried a couple different color combinations, eventually settling on a Rust-Oleum metallic aluminum. It's a lighter finish metal, but I feel like it contrasts well against the hilt and the cross guard. So once you painted this on, all that's left to do is wait for that paint to dry and then we can assemble everything. So for assembly, we're gonna slide the wolf's head over the bottom part of the blade. This is a pretty tight fit, so we're not gonna be using any glue to hold it in place, but you could use something like E6000 if you want to. Next, I'm gonna slide the hilt over and try and put on the pommel, but my 5 16 metal rod here is a little bit long, so I've got to cut it off with the Dremel bit. But once that's done, I apply some E6000 to the hilt, to the metal rod, and to the pommel. The glue at the bottom should hold everything in place pretty well. Wait for that glue to cure for 24 hours, and then we'll have our finished blade. So there you go, guys. That is how I made my medieval commander wolf sword. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. I know I did during this process. I got to learn leather wrapping and I got to try out my new CR30 printer. I had a lot of fun with this project and I hope it inspires some of you to take on this project yourself. 
Remember to check out the description for links to the 3D files or the 3D prints, as well as all the supplies and tools that I used. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.